All right, and welcome back to another edition of Boxing Al Garete, Boseo Al Garete. So, um, I have a couple quick little few things I want to share with you guys today. Uh, got reports. Uh, so, we got uh, Keith Thurman saying that he is uh, <laughs> the next, the new Manny Pacquiao. Um, he's going down in the state and he says it doesn't matter who it is when Keith Thurman fought Sean Porter. It was nominated Fight of the Year when Keith Thurman fought Danny. The fans had a tremendous show. Keith Thurman fights Matt Pacquiao, or Keith Thurman fights Earl Smith, or Keith Thurman fights Buck Crawford. I think Keith Thurman is the new Manny Pacquiao, said Thurman, and bring TV. So basically what he's saying is that since all the fights that he's been in um, are very, you know, have been very good fights, and I'm not going to lie on that, they've been really good fights. So if you want to compare him and being good fights like Pacquiao, then I guess you could say that. Um, he goes on to say, I think I'm the most exciting fight in the welterweight division. I only did, not only did the Lopez fight show some weaknesses and, and might give them a little bit of confidence, but on the outside of that, like Leonard Ellerby mentioned, Keith Thurman has the best resume at 147, two years out of the game, and I still have the best resume at 147. You know, he does make a valid point right there. He does have the best re resume right now at 147. Um, do I feel that he's the top dog at 147? No, of course not. Um, I think that goes to Errol Smith. But he does have the best resume. Um, let's see. Uh, he also goes on to say that he's going to be knocking Pacquiao out in six rounds. Um, which I find that, I don't know very doable i guess you know with thurman's power um in a lot of the media workout he's been um saying that that he's going to be hitting manny's body that his part that by many sparring partners are not hitting that body that he's going to be hitting that body and he's going to be slowing him down um to be honest with you i i don't like that game plan too much um because usually when you're the taller fighter it's a little bit harder for you to land the body shots and also you get exposed easier because you have to kind of lean down for the body shots so um you know with his height advantage and his really good footwork i would think his best chance would be you know to stay to stay you know to keep pacquiao at bay keep him uh, at the stick you know hold him with the stick and right hand um but it seems like the way he's talking that he's going to be doing an inside game with Pacquiao. He feels that he can beat Manny Pacquiao in the inside game, which that could be the case, you know. Um, you you haven't really seen Pacquiao do a lot of inside work. Um, when Jeff Horn was roughing him up, it seemed like he kind of struggled with that. So I can see why Thurman might want to take that approach. I think that's the approach he's taking. Um, I think he's going to be taking the physical approach. I think he's going to try to... Um, uses height and 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 reach, and on um, body, you know, to wear Pacquiao down, kind of like Thorn did in a way. So, but well, I just have to see how that plays out, you know. Um, style makes fights, and like I said, um, I'm not used to seeing Thurman fighting in the inside, so we'll just have to see how he performs when it comes to that. Um, moving down the list. Um, I guess Daniel Jacobs is still open to fighting at 160, even though there were rumors um, saying that he was moving, he might move to 168 because he was having issues with the weight. But he's uh, he just came out open, said that he's willing to fight Triple G in a rematch, and he's f willing to fight Charlo and Connolly. So hopefully, um, maybe any of those fights could be made because I would like to see any of those fights rematch with Triple G will be pretty cool. I would love to see the Charlo fight. That's, you know, there's some good animosity between those two guys for a couple of years now, so that will probably be a really good fight. Um they they said that it will be announcing uh, uh it says here Keith Collins also tells Box Daniel Jake's will return date and opponent will be announced in the coming weeks likely to move up to 168 Danny will be open to returning to middleweight in 2020 for for a big New York fight like Jermel Charlo or a Triple G so okay so let me let me reconfirm what I had just said um, so he's going to go to 168 but he'll be willing to come back down for the big fights at 160 um 
So yeah, that that I, I would think that should be a good move. Um, you know, at one sixty eight, he has a lot uh a lot of good people there. You know, he could probably maybe make a fight with Billy Joe Saunders, um, David Benavides, um, Caleb Plant, um, Kayun Smith. You know, any of those guys, he would, I think he would give them tough work, and even even beat them. Um, Daniel's a very good very good talent. Um, I know he's been kind of on the down fall of things. Um. But uh, I would like to see his uh, first performance at 168 just to see how he performs and just to see maybe if it was a weight issue that maybe that's why he wasn't performing to his full potential at 160 because he was doing a lot of weight dra uh, draining. So, um, so to kind of stay in things with uh, with Canelo and the middleweight division, um, Canelo still hasn't answered. Um, the IBF purse bid be in order for the Dara Vijenko fight. There is no response to that, so most likely what I'm seeing from this is that they're probably gonna vacate the title. Um, I don't know. I'm not seeing Canelo showing any interest in fighting this guy. So, and he is a very good prospect. You know, I'm not saying that he'll beat Canelo, but I'm saying he will give Canelo a tough time. So, um, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. You know, you guys know how I feel about it. This is a circus when it comes to when it comes to these, you know, these boxers, especially Canelo in the middleweight division. You know, not wanting to fight the top dogs. You know, it's ridiculous, but it is what it is. We'll see what happens with this. We'll see who Canelo picks in the next couple of weeks, because I would think an announcement should be soon. Because you know, if you're really trying to make that fight for September. Um, you only got a couple months for training and all that and promoting, so you want to put kind of step on it. Um, moving forward, uh, I also want to announce that I, w I wanted to give this a little bit more, more, you know, promo out there. I haven't heard too many people talking about this fight. Um, so Aries Lani Lara and Ramon Inocente Alvarez will be fighting August 31st for the interim uh, WBA 54 title. 154 title, so um, that should be a pretty decent fight. Um, hopefully, um, they put a good show. Uh, I've been liking what I've been seeing from Lara lately. He's been standing more in the pocket, willing to fight, duke it out. Um, those are really good things to see from the Cuban boxer. Um, we saw a little bit of that um, also with uh, Rigan Dow. He did the same thing, um, staying in the pocket, fighting. I don't know. They are both being trained by the same guy, so I don't know if that they've kind of like gotten together and decided that this is how they're going to fight from now on, which personally I prefer it. I hope they continue fighting this way because, you know, though I, I, I can see them getting bigger fights just because of them fighting this way because, you know, most of these fo boxers that don't want to fight them is because they feel that they don't, they don't have a chance, you know, because of their boxing abilities. But, you know, they'll feel they'll have more of a chance if they're standing there in the pocket with them. So, We're looking forward to that fight, too. Um, Holyfield um, also taps um, Andy Reese in beating um, Anthony Joshua in the rematch. I've said that as well. Um, you know, he also, like me, believes that the combination and the, and the hand speed is just going to be too much for Anthony. And not enough time to fix all those things that Anthony needs to fix. So, just wanted to give that up. And then, uh, last but not least, the uh, Epi Awards were out. Canelo got the Fighter of the Year. But I think the biggest win for boxing, at least in my eyes, was the um, upset by Reese. Um, it got, it won the upset of the year. Um, now, it, it was as a sport, you know, it wasn't like how, you know, fighter of the year type of thing where it's, you know, fighters. No, this was like going against other sports, and we actually got the win. So, we've got to give props to Andy for that, for bringing that win over here to the boxing world. Um, I think it's it's a great thing for boxing. Right now, um, I love seeing Andy on top. I love, you know, the Cinderella story. He's just... Um, He's just a great guy. He deserves everything that's coming to him. Um, I wish him all but the best. I hope he keeps representing the Latinos the way he is because he's been really humble. He's been just a great guy. You know, he's just been now just living his better life, a life that he's worked very hard for. So, you know, 
Um, I do hear a lot of people talking about that. Oh, that he's taking, uh, that he is underestimating now, Joshua. That he's taking it easy. I don't think so, man. I think he's just enjoying his life. You know, he has a long way till the fight. Ain't no reason to overtrain. Um, personally, I don't know why Anthony Joshua is, you know, going so hard in training. Um, I hope there's not a case of overtraining when it comes to the fight. When he, that he over, that he's he's gonna say that he overtrained for the fight. So we'll see. But um, that's pretty much what I got for you guys now. Um, I'll keep you guys updated if anything else happens. I will be dropping um, the video of my five reasons why Manny beats Thurman today. Um, I will get that done today for you guys. So um, please keep sharing. Please uh, follow me on um, Instagram and uh, follow me here on YouTube. Please subscribe to the channel. Um, if you haven't listened to me before, um, you know, go through some of my videos. You'll see that, um, you know, I try to keep you guys up to date with all the boxing news. I try to keep it as professional as possible. Um, <laughs> I do get my hood on sometimes, but it's part of the game. Uh, but, yeah, um, let's keep this going. Let's keep um, informing the people, and let's make um, boxing worldwide. Thank you for listening, and I uh, hope... Hope you guys enjoy. Peace.